Welcome fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. Welcome to our fifth anniversary. Yay, Jazz Hands. This meeting is officially beginning and it is a celebration. Guests, please note that if you would like to be a member of this club, you have to be either a current or a former active member in Toastmasters International and have completed at least six official speeches. If you have had substantial presentation experience, you can apply simply by giving a two to three minute speech during one of the club meetings. All requests for membership are subject to approval by the members of the club. So if you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure that it shows your name and any role, if any, you're playing tonight. Simply click on your panel and select rename in order to do that. We have members and guests from all over the world. And as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of your language usage so that you don't be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to our cultural differences. Please note, we are recording this celebration and we probably will use your video and audio contribution for our club marketing purposes. Also, please mute your microphone when you are not speaking. And I am going to bring to this virtual birthday celebration our current president, DTM, Lou Brown. Over to you, Lou. Thank you, Madam Sergeant Arms. Welcome everyone to our last meeting of this Toastmaster cycle. I am so excited, not just because I'm rolling off. I mean, it is a, <laughs> a lot of work, but quite frankly, I would love to stay on even longer. It is such a wonderful opportunity to be a president of this or any club, quite frankly. But I am so amazed at how many people are here today. And it's so nice to see some of our friends that we haven't seen in a while, Chris and Jim. I see Dr. Alexander, I'm looking around. I know I've seen a couple other faces that I haven't seen Well, Tricia, I know we haven't seen you in a couple of meetings. And I thought I saw a few others that I missed your name, so sorry. But again, thank you all for being here. It's so nice to be in a club where we have like regular attendance of near 30 members. First of all, Mr. or Mrs. Host, please give me co-host capability as I will need to share my screen later. Also, I ask that you check in with some of the other folks who may need to do so as well. This is our trifecta, our triple header. We have a meeting with a end of year celebration with a five year anniversary, just so much going on this year, a jam packed agenda. I am going to shut up right now because this is all about you. We're going to hop right into part, I guess I'll call it part one of our, of our entire experience here, which is going to be David kicking off a very special presentation. Take it away, David. All right, thanks, Lou. I'm going to show you a little glimpse at where we started. And hopefully you're going to look at that and say, wow, we've made some progress. Because when I show you this picture, well, I'll tell you, my office hasn't gotten any less messy, but I've gotten better at covering it up with green screen effects. Uh, so special effects do a lot to neaten up the office. and and also probably gotten a little bit better at the camera angle so that you're not looking up my nose uh, at quite, quite that angle. Uh, but still, you'll hear some familiar voices here. And uh, it's a trip back to memory lane, although some of you don't remember it, so. Does your mute all override our individual mutes? I think so, yes. Um, well, I don't know, maybe you can unmute yourself, but. Um, you can't unmute yourself. All right. <laughs> John, you, um, uh, we, <laughs> we're getting distracted by technology, but uh, we'll, we'll do the best we can. I should show up on the screen here sooner or later, right? There we go. Oh, good. You can see me? We can. I just see you. <laughs> I still see you. All right. So, hello. I'm George Marshall. I'm the, as David said, I'm the Chief Pathways Guide for District 57, and we are the very first district to launch on Pathways. Can you see my screen now? We can. 
All right, very good. So Pathways is a program that's been in development for years. Yeah, Arlene, why don't you go ahead and make us official. Fellow Toastmasters, I call this meeting to order. It is our first meeting of March and our first meeting as an official chartered club, online presenters. And I would like you to help me welcome our newly elected president and founder, David Carr. Thank you, Arlene. So welcome to Online Presenters. This is a Toastmasters Club dedicated to learning better skills for webinars and online events of all sorts. This meeting will be recorded. We say that at the top of the agenda to make sure that everybody has fair warning. Toastmasters, guests, and special evaluator. Today I'm gonna to give you a glimpse at the easy green screen setup. It's a simple, cost-effective way you can do things like this and more. Oh, here's what my real room looks like right now. Two to three minutes per speaker and then, and then move on to the general, general feedback. feedback. We'll do that. All right. All right. All right. Timer. Uh, uh, we'll do her, do her thing. All right. All right. Okay. If Somebody, if everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute everybody again and you can unmute yourself, Roger. And then we can come back and at some point talk about it. In fact, why that happens and what you can do to help others out besides just hit the massive mute button. Join us, join <laughs> us, come. Uh, why would you 11? not? So thank you for joining us for the mini webinar contest at Online Presenters Toastmasters. My name is David Carr. I chartered this club with some help from my friends a little more than a year ago and have been serving since then as president. Tonight, I will be your contest master. This is not an official Toastmasters contest format, though maybe it should be. We thought it was important to hold a contest specifically built around the elements that make a professional webinar or online presentation effective. And at first place in our first ever mini webinar contest is... Carol! Oh. Hey, Carol! Oh, my day is made, my day is made. I just wanted to share a few memorable moments there. Some of the things I want you to notice, first of all, we've gotten a little bit better at people knowing how to mute themselves and not having echoes on the line. As often, stuff still goes wrong, uh, but we're better prepared for it when it does. We did a few things right, I think, in the very beginning. We had this series of workshops that we did that we hosted to bring in experts on various things. Uh, Roger Corville, who you saw there, is somebody who we had in actually several times. He, you saw him, he was actually giving, we had him as our guest evaluator. So he was the only evaluator for that evening. He evaluated all the speeches and gave some professional feedback as somebody who is an expert on webinars and online events uh, to our members. So I thought that was pretty cool. We had him back as a, a celebrity guest judge, we called him, for our first webinar contest. And at some point, I think we actually overdid the, the workshops a little bit where people said, hey, we, we need to be able to get in here and actually give speeches, right? Because that's where, why we're part of a Toastmasters club. We don't wanna just, just hear from these experts or supposed experts. Um, we, you know, we wanna develop our own expertise. And so we tried to work out some balance over time. And then when Lois and Nick came along as, as presidents of this club, 
they took that to a whole different level with VTMCon of, of having a whole separate day program, or at one point we actually had a two day program. Uh, Nick Lois, also Krishna and Pamela, uh, brought it to that great next level. And th th there was some, uh, some drama you might've heard about over the, the past year about calling it VTMCon and uh, branding issues and legal issues with Toastmasters International. Doesn't matter. Um, it, what matters is that there was innovation coming out of this club. And if we innovated a little too fast for some people's taste, uh, that's kind of their problem. So we've done some great things in this club. Uh, I, I look forward to doing more great things uh, in this club <clears throat> and bringing out the talents of our people, as well as from when it's appropriate, bringing in experts from outside who can help us level up our skills. I think that's enough for me for right now. I, I think I get a chance to come back later for some Q&A portion of the meeting. And let me hand it back to our Toastmaster of the day, Kim. I am so sorry. I really thought I was going to come go back to Lou first. So thank you um, so much, David, and thank you, Mr. President, my fellow Toastmasters, and our most welcome guests. I'd like to welcome everyone to Online Presenters Toastmasters. I'm Kim Leeming. It's my honor to be Toastmaster of the Day for this evening. I was going to do a brief speech about the theme of the day, but I lost my speaking notes. Now I'm speechless. Just kidding. The theme of the day is celebration and anniversary. That theme was chosen, as you know, because it is the fifth anniversary of online presenters. The board has some special presentations throughout tonight's meeting to celebrate online presenters' fifth anniversary, including the wonderful video we just watched. A big thank you goes to Toastmaster David Carr for preparing that fun glimpse into online presenter Toastmaster meetings. I have a confession to make. Actually, this is the anniversary year rather than the exact day, but since I'm a natural blonde, we'll just go with June 27th, okay? Considering that Online Presenters was born during the period between June 21st and July 21st, that means Online Presenters belongs to the Cancer astrological sign. As such, Online Presenters is sensitive. I say that is true. I've definitely found OP to be caring and sensitive while still encouraging everyone to become better speakers through both positive and negative feedback. Being born with the sun in cancer also means that online presenters is an emotional and home-based creature. Wow, home-based is a great description of an online club. And we're emotional as we see our peers reach milestones in their Toastmaster pathways. It is now time for the tip of the day, which is a three to five minute speech about a tech technical tip. Tonight's tech tip will be presented by Graham Carnes. Take it away, Graham. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, Kim. Because we have so much else happening today, I'm going to keep this tech tip relatively short. As you know, I could fill the five minutes without any problems and without taking breath. But instead, I'm going to give you a tip for presenting online. Many of us have noticed that if you are delivering a presentation which is note heavy, it's really easy to lose connection with the camera, looking down to the bottom of the screen where your notes are, looking over to the side. And there are suggestions that I've heard over the past five years of ways to get around that. One of them is to use sticky notes and you actually stick little notes next to your camera because most of us have a camera which is either built into the top of our screen if we're using a laptop or placed on top of the screen if we're using a monitor. But there's another way of doing this. Well, there are two other ways. One is a fairly expensive one, that is to buy something like PlexiCam, which is literally a plastic thing that you stick your camera on in the middle of the screen so that when you look at your camera, you're looking at the middle of the screen. But that's around $70 US or around $100 Australian. And I'm not going to spend that just for, so that you can see my pretty face more effectively. The other way, if you're going to be using notes and you still want to be looking at the camera, is instead of having your notes on a full screen, put your Microsoft Word, if that is your 
note material of choice into view mode rather than read mode and then shrink it so that it is just two lines and just that wide and you put that just below the camera so that way you can continue to read your notes but because your camera is directly above that little section of notes on your screen the audience never notice that you're reading from notes well they might see your eyes flicking slightly left to right but it is certainly much less obtrusive than having a full screen of notes and having to glance down to the bottom to read that so if you wish to keep eye contact with your audience but still need to use notes shrink your notes down into a small screen segment place that small screen segment directly below your camera and your audience most of the time will not know that you're cheating as I say I'm going to make this a short tech tip for today because we are going to be having so much other exciting material and I hand control back to you now Adam Toastmaster Thank you, Graham. Surveys have shown that public speaking is the number one fear of the average person. Number two is death. Jerry Seinfeld once said, this means that at a funeral, more people would rather be in the casket than doing the eulogy. Since online presenters is an advanced club, most OP Toastmasters have already conquered their fear of public speaking. But even so, Toastmasters is such an encouraging environment to advance public speaking skills <clears throat> that is just wonderful. Did you hear about the judge who decided to leave his job at the court to join Toastmasters and become a public speaking instructor? That judge progressed from reading sentences to entire paragraphs. So it may seem like the Toastmaster a day runs the meeting. However, it's actually a team effort. I will now introduce the people who will be assisting today. They will each have 30 seconds to one minute to describe their role for tonight's meeting. Today's timer is David Carr. David, would you please tell us about your duties as timer? Indeed. At the appropriate intervals, I will show green, yellow, and red signals behind me. You don't need to see them right now. But for the typical speech, it would be green at five minutes, yellow at six, red at seven. And for an evaluation, which we'll be having a little bit later, two minutes for green, two and a half for yellow, and three for red. And for table topics, it's one, one thirty, and two. Back to you, Mrs. Thank you, Mr. David. Next up is our odd counter. Today's odd counter is Carolina Ramirez. Carolina, could you please describe your duties tonight? Sure, my role as a, a counter is to count your grants, your uh, arms, awkward sounds, and I will give you my report at the end of the meeting. And please, sorry, at arms, I will need share to share my screen for the report. Back to you, Kim. Thank you, Carolina. The grammarian for tonight's meeting is Pamela Benjamin. Pamela, could you please talk about your role tonight and tell us about the word of the day? I think you might be muted. Milestone is the word of the day. We've reached a milestone in online presenters. I will be keeping track of how many times we use the word. I will also take note of the great uses of the English language, the not so great uses of the English language so that we can all get better. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Pamela. Tonight's watcher is Natasha Vanillison. Natasha, could you please share your duties for tonight? Of course. Hello and happy birthday, everyone. Tonight, I am your watcher, and I will be watching you to see how you are centered. And I'm also looking at the beautiful celebratory backgrounds. And I will provide a report at the end. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Tonight's chat monitor is Deborah Carr. Deborah, could you please describe your role? I will. It, it, chat monitor is a biggie tonight. I can see this already because with everyone coming back and visiting, there is a lot of chat going on. 
So I'll, be, I'll keep an eye on it and I'll report later and let you know what's going on. Back to you. Thank you, Deborah. Next up is our vote counter, Adrienne Williams. Adrienne, could you please tell us about your role for tonight? Absolutely. It is my job to tally the votes so that we can announce a winner at the end of either speeches, evaluations, or our favorite thing, table topics. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Adrienne. This brings us to the prepared speeches, or shall we say for tonight's speech, portion of the meeting. Due to our celebration tonight, we have just one speaker, Maggie Liu. Her speech is titled, Game of Life, What Have We Learned? This is from the Team Collaboration Pathway Level 2, Learning Your Style, Understanding Your Leadership Style. How do you spend your family time with young children? Maggie's family loves playing board games together. Today, she'd like to talk about the fa famous Hasbro game of life. Please welcome Toastmaster Maggie Liu, Game of Life, What Have We Learned? We see your screen, Maggie, but we don't hear you. Maggie? Maggie appears to have frozen. Well, we can put her speech later in the in the day. What what's what what do we want to do? Maggie, are you able to type in the chat box? Let us know. There you are. Maggie is back. <laughs> yeah. Can you see my screen? Just wondering. Yes. Yes. Yes, can, Maggie, yes. Okay. Um, good morning. This is Maggie from Brisbane. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, the favorite board game of my family, Game of Life. So, can I just do a quick survey? Um, has any of our fellow Toastmasters um, played this game or have heard of this game? Could you just raise up your hand? Thank you, thank you very much. Right, so in our family, we have a two uh, school kids children um, about 10 years old, and we play this game a lot. So when we play together, I kind of wondering how we play this game and how we kind of live our lives from this game. So to start with, um, I'm pretty sure Lots of you guys have played this game before. You, as starting as a player, you have some assets. So you have a car, like this is the capacity to carry your families, your career, and you have this blue pig. So this is like your identity. Then you have this basic human rights to go to school, to get to work, to earn the money, to feed your family, and also have the right to vote, to make a choice. And then you also, if you're lucky enough to have some, you know, economic basic things to, um, to, to pursue some of your personal passions. So when I play together with my children, I kind of, oh, this is the basic thing. You can just start with as a player, but think about it. What about 100 years ago? If you were born as a woman, unfortunately, you couldn't get a work you couldn't vote, so you're not part of this game. If you were born 300 years ago as an Africa slave, you couldn't go to school either. You couldn't go to work. You couldn't earn money to feed your family. So you are not part of this game. So this is the starting point. I kind of ask the children to think about who can play and it's a, it's a privilege you can play this life of the game, game of the life. Next, um, that's lots of fantastic opportunities in this game. For example, you can purchase house. You can buy either a family house or apartments. Um, you can buy the, buy the pet. You can also do lots of actions cards. Those action cards, really interesting. For example, run a marathon and you could earn 100,000. 
join a karate class, you can get 60,000 from it. Write a children's book, collect the passion day, start a long online business, climb Mount Everest. The children really love all these action cards. And also at the bottom, you can see that's two types of career cards. So one type is a college career. The other one is just normal career. That means you can become a lawyer or you can become a teacher if you go to college. Or if you don't want to go to college, save some money, you could become either a mechanic or a farmer. Then it comes to an interesting stops. So that's the stops. I asked the children, wait a minute, what's your choice? Do you choose to get married, have your family, start in your family pass? Or do you wanna to go to night school, change job, do something else? Do you want to do a safety route or a risky route? So that's kind of the conversation we've been doing when we're doing this um, game together. Eventually, when you come to this um, end of the game, it's called retirement. So from the instruction, you need to add up your wealth. Sell your house to find out whether you can earn money or earn nothing. And count action cards, so each of the action cards worth some money. And also count your kids. So that's a little thing like, you know, the blue is the little boy and the pink is the little girl. Each of them worth 100,000. I don't know why, well, I don't know where's the logic from, but that's how you count the money from. And then whoever have the first pile of money, you're the winner, you're happy, retired. So this is pretty much this game. Well, I play together with my children. I kind of wonder, and I ask them questions. So I ask three children, Boy one, why you love this game? He says, I want to make my own choice and I love counting my money. I feel like I own the world. I asked girl one, why you like this game? She says, I feel like I have so much opportunity. I can try all the things I want to do, but in the real life, I couldn't do. Then the boy two says, I feel like I'm the boss. I have five children in my car and then I have so much money. I'm definitely the boss of the family. So that's why they love this game. Then also I wondered, I asked them a question. Think about, is there anything in this game is not realistic? Is there anything in this game you want to add up? So they thought about it and they told me, mom, that doesn't make sense because if you want to go to college, be a lawyer, you have to pay very high tuition fee. And also, if you buy a house and something happened like financial crisis or economic recession, the property price will go down. You probably will lose your money. And what about if you're working too hard, you're not healthy anymore. You couldn't balance with your family. So this is all of the things missed from this game. Right, and I kind of asked my children, what do you think of the winner of the game? It's not about just adding wealth. It's not just about sell house, count each child is 100,000. It's actually about appreciating your wealth. That means you're gonna realize you need both physical health and mental health. You need to love, have the love support from the family and the community and also have lots of experience, the feelings, and then the basic one is the financial freedom. So back to the Toastmaster pathway, why am I choosing this topic? It's because I want to demonstrate the leadership styles. I'm pretty sure all of us are familiar with two styles, democracy and coaching. So in these two styles, you let the children take the lead, want to try the, the thing they want to do, and also the community back with you, they give you the input why they choose this one, what's the benefit and anything they want to improve from this game. Eventually you challenge them, you give them the very positive statement and hopefully you have lots of fun in this family game. Thank you, that's all. Back to you, table, uh, sorry, um, Madam Toastmaster of today. Thank you, Maggie, for a very thought-provoking speech. 
Again, our timer tonight is David Carr. David, could you please give a timer's report for Maggie's milestone speech? Oh, she was a little bit over time, but we're not voting tonight anyways, so it doesn't really matter. And sometimes uh, I know when I'm speaking, sometimes I'd rather finish my thought than be on time. So I'm sympathetic. Thank you, David. I was about to ask everyone to please take a moment to cast your vote, but as David said, you vote for Maggie or you vote for Maggie or you vote for Maggie. So um, next on tonight's agenda is another celebration event. Andy Byrne, VP Education, is going to present a list of educational milestones achieved over the last year in online presenters. Take it away, Andy. Thank you very much, Kim. We have lots of events. David touched on a whole bunch of them, but let me cover some of the things that uh, has been going on in the club over the last five years, but more importantly, where we are right now. Where we are right now is we're all on the back end of our Zoom, watching what everyone else is doing and celebrating our fifth year as a club. I want you to think of these two quotes. The first one is John Maxwell. A leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. And we've been blessed with leadership in our club that follow this motto. They know what they're doing, they help us lead the way and allow us to follow. Additionally, we've been a club of innovation like Steve Jobs talks about. If you wanna be successful in the digital leadership world, you have to be an innovator and not just a follower. And we've had many examples that David pointed out in his video. He talked about our special relationship with other digital clubs or virtual clubs and holding our own virtual uh, meeting. One time it's called uh, EVV, another one was VTM. So those are innovations. The workshops are bringing in outside speakers were innovations. Before you all forget, don't forget, and I put this in the chat box so you can read it more clearly but we have had our vote we have filled our officers and we have uh, sent that into toastmasters so we are on our way I want you to recognize that you know the clubs can be a little bit complicated if you look at it this is from the leadership manual and it shows you where the club officers fit in in terms of rank ordering the president is number one, the VPE is number two, and so on and so forth. As I was preparing for this, I came across Ruby, and Ruby gave a talk at two, the last live uh, event I went to in Denver. And she gave a talk about the ways of making your club excellent, or she said the seven star uh, method of improving your club and and providing that excellence within your club and her background is one of coming out of disney and did training for people at disney so she had a little bit of experience in that and she i recommend i'm going to put in the chat her youtube video and you can see this in more detail we are always engaging, and this meeting is fantastic because we see where we used to be. We used to be consistently large numbers of more than 30 people showing up at a meeting, which is a lot better than sometimes when we've met and have only had uh, less than 20. But it can be done. I'm going to put this video. This is from the Motivational Videos. This is with Arnold Schwarzenegger giving his story of how he got to where he was. And the primary way he got there was because he set goals and pursued them relentlessly, no matter what it would take. And when he's talking about his bodybuilding goal, he said that he would be working five or six hours a day uh, and building his body with athletic activities and, and, and exercises, which is hard for me to imagine doing that for six hours a day that's what he had done and so we 
are commended by a lot of dedicated people. In the Toastmasters promise, one of those areas in the Toastmasters promise is making a commitment to the club, a commitment to yourself to be prepared for your assignments, show up when you've agreed to do so, and then move forward. And I've been really pleased in that in our club, uh, when people make a commitment, for the most part, uh, they've not let life events come in, in between them keeping that commitment and that event. So we've been very blessed with that. Uh, we have many examples, and I'll put that in the chat because I don't think I'll have that much time to go in many details. But I do want to point out uh, one thing that Lick, Nick Lacani had just uh, told me that he has completed three full paths and one DTM path that he's given credit to our club. And that's pretty amazing. And I really would like everybody to give a, a quiet or a silent uh, clapping or a note to Graham to, to thank him, uh, Nick, to thank Nick for submitting three full paths and the DTM. Many of us in this club belong to more than one club. And sometimes it gets really crazy in terms of deciding where are you going to give your credit for your club meeting. And I want to just point out that don't go crazy. It can be done. If you choose a goal, the vice president of education is there to help you get on the schedule. And we've seen that we've been innovative in terms of bringing into our regular meetings the speechathons, where we'll have six plus meeting uh, speeches, pre prepared speeches done within our meeting. We even tried going off our normal schedule to a Saturday and allow people to, to speak there because they had a level four, level five speech that required 20 plus minutes to do those speeches. Uh, we've also overcome the issues of not having a district, because we're undistricted, to go to outside uh, districts and go to their meetings and get the official Toastmasters training. So we've been very innovative. We've been flexible and adaptable, and we've shown all those skills. We have, at this point in time, uh, oops, uh, find it. At this point in time, we're sitting very nicely at nine points. That's the Distinguished Club Program points. And we are doing well in that regard. Thank you all for delivering your speeches and to provide those credits within our, our uh, system. The most recent ones also are Pam Benjamin, who has given us a level two. So this one shows level two open, but she's just finished a level two and provided it to our club. And uh, Andre Slomenko has just recently completed a path. So we are very grateful to all our members who are keeping the eye on the ball. And it's said by Stephen Covey, uh, take actions with the end in mind. So if you know what the club needs, if you know what you need, keep your eye with the end in mind. And the very last thing I wanted to mention is that everybody is accomplished and everybody is advanced, but there is something that you can still gather from people in the club uh, that are more advanced than you in whatever the endeavor it is that you want to go for. And therefore, everybody in this club should be a mentor and have a mentee. And there should be no one in the club that doesn't have that. So I just wanted to mention that for everybody that we are looking forward to having uh, everybody have a mentor. If you do not, uh, let us know. Let the VPE uh, know. David Carr is the VPE. I'll be assisting him. And your base camp management team is the president, the vice president of education, and the secretary. Also, uh, we'll be going to, I know I'll be going, I don't know who else will be going, to the Nashville International Meeting. And that will be exciting because, uh, at least for me, 
Uh, Matt Kenseth could be inducted as the incoming uh, president-elect, and he's a member from my club in Coral Springs. We can see everybody's leadership growth throughout the five years that we've been in here, and we can see how you've taken that leadership and taken it elsewhere to do wonderful things. At this point, I'll give the rest of my time back to the club for the good of the club and let you take it from here. Thank you, Andy. This brings us to yet another celebration uh, portion of the meeting. Lou Brown, our current OP president, will present a list of participation overachievers. Take it <laughs> away, Lou. Thank you so much, Madam Toastmaster. Educational achievements is but half the formula for a successful club. We are an amazing club for so many reasons. We have over three members. Many clubs would love to have that many members. And quite frankly, I would say 85% of our membership is very active and shows up on a regular basis. So thank you. Thank you to all of you for making that happen. As I mentioned, we have so many amazing people in our club. As I was putting this together, I was like, holy cow, I got to really shrink these little images because we have just so many amazing folks. My apologies to some of you who did not put a picture on the WordPress website. website. Hint, hint, please get your photo into your bio so that we can use them for any future celebratory events. And also, as I'm going through some of these achievements, I'd like our newer members to keep in mind that some of you may not have been here long enough to rack up enough time with this particular type of achievement, but I am confident that you will do so going forward. Let's start off with folks who have given the most speeches in online presenters. We have a three-way tie for fifth place, with Antoinette, David Carr, and Andre. And folks, if you'd like to clap, feel free to unmute and do so real briefly. In fourth place, Trisha Smith, also known as Patricia Smith, until she changes her video snippet. In third place, we have Pamela Benjamin. Second place, our resident radio personality, Graham Cairns, and first place, the person who has done the most speeches and online presenters over the past year is Angela Heath. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention some of prize winning speeches along the way. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. EVV Con and so many other folks has, have contributed their talents and their skills and their presentations to other aspects, even outside of online presenters. As Andy mentioned, many folks are members of, of many different clubs. So it's wonderful that folks continue to do their speeches on a regular basis and contributing to their personal growth. Conducting speeches is but half of the success of our club because as Kim mentioned up front, she can't run this show alone. She needs help. Folks who have signed up for the most roles over the past year. And I'm going to give special kudos to those who have done 20 or more roles over the past year. First, we have Pamela Benjamin, Andre Smolenko, Marianne Grady, Carolina Ramirez, Rick Derling, Our very own VP of Education, Andy Byrne. Graham Cairns. Myself. Mr. David Carr. And by the way, David, you haven't changed one bit since back in 2017 when he showed us that video of you. <laughs> and Jim Barber has done the most roles, signed up for the most roles of any member in our, of our club. And I will say, by a long shot. Jim was something like 10 or more role signups ahead of the rest of us. So thank you very much, Jim, for your awesome contributions and, and continued contributions to our club. And there you have it, folks, 20 plus role signups over the past year. Again, with we have folks who have done so much in so many different ways, both within the club and outside of the club. I thank you 
for being a part of our club over not just the past year, but for those of you who have been here longer, our charter members especially, all the way back to day one. Just looking at your video, David, it's amazing how much we have grown. I was just looking at that and the memories itself are just wonderful, but just thinking, oh my goodness, how much we have grown over the past year. It's amazing. I also wanna give a special shout out to one of our members who, while it was difficult for me to find whether or not this is technically true, I am 99.9% .9 sure it's true, but Marty Sandler, AKA Big Turtle, has got to be the most veteran Toastmaster in the entire organization Again, I'm 99.9% .9 sure of that. And Marty is also a regular active member. Marty, thank you so much for being with us as often as you're able to make it. We appreciate you and all of you members of our club. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Lou. And thanks to everyone for all of that participation. It was so great to see that and hear that. Um, our next portion of the meeting is the evaluation section. Our general evaluator for tonight is Jim Barber. Please welcome Toastmaster Jim Barber. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. This is the evaluation portion of this milestone meeting of online presenters. We had only one speaker this evening, Maggie Lou, and evaluating Maggie, we have one of our newer members, Joni Laidlaw. Joni, take it away. Toastmaster Maggie, I loved your pace and your tone. It made it easy for me to understand. Though the eloquence of it wasn't what I'm used to, or should I say the flow was different than I'm used to, because of your pace and your tone, I could follow and understand what you were saying. I like your use of a PowerPoint. It gave me the chance to read a lot. Now, as a member of the Neurodivergent Committee, it means that sometimes it makes it hard to focus when I just focus in one direction, but you had both the information on the screen and you also gave me the opportunity to see along with hearing what you had to say. So if I have a different style of learning or understanding, I got both. I am going to give you a few suggestions on how you can make your presentation better. First, my suggestion, and I wanted to demonstrate by sharing my screen, let me see if you will be able to see the screen, was to size the screen. We have an option on Zoom where you can size the screen because what I was seeing was all of your PowerPoint, and I don't wanna see that because it can be distracting one, with the brain I have, I might choose to read ahead. So if you go into settings on Zoom, don't go to basic, you go to advanced, you can either use PowerPoint as a virtual background or use portion of screen. Why would I suggest portion of screen for you? I noticed that you were actually freezing, which means that chances are, it is the process of utilizing the PowerPoint as well as Zoom, that was probably causing you to freeze and giving you the option. Now, what can you do? If you do that, then you have the opportunity to select that part. I don't see, see the entire screen. I only see the portion that you want me to see. But the beauty of it, you can have it up and click on the sides and move them. And I don't get to see your entire presentation as share from beginning might crash your system. The other option I have for you is to use it as a background. Now, this computer, I have two. If I use it on this one, it will actually crash it. So if you go to PowerPoint as background and share, it may cause it to crash, meaning you guys won't see me anymore. And the thing about it is that when you do that, you appear in the background. You appear as a part of the presentation. And why do I suggest that? You had cards, you were showing me visual representation. You were showing me something, you were holding it up. It made it difficult to see because then you became just a squidgy little thing at the side and a very small box. And I know that the cards were also a visual aid in your presentation. So if you use PowerPoint as a virtual background, that will allow you to be actually in the presentation presenting on Zoom 
And when you hold the cards up, you then become a part of the foreground of the image and it won't be a distraction from what you are presenting. Overall, I enjoyed the information. I ask that you give me a little bit more vocal variety. I wanted to know what little boy one sounds like, or little girl two sounded like, or for the other little boy, and name them. It gives a personal touch. You know, you fall in love with people more when you know their names. Joni is the person from Jamaica who will talk about Happy Earth Strong, and she's all about Jamaica. It helps when you put the name to it and add a bit of their personality when you speak because it is about the individual and that's how we make connections. But overall, I enjoyed your speech. I loved your use of visual aids as well as vocal variety, as well as your pace and tone. Back to you, our general evaluation. Thank you, Joni. Hello. And Mr. Timer, David Carr, for Joni's benefit, how did she do time-wise? Uh, over four minutes. So <laughs> uh, we're consistent tonight, but again, we're not <laughs> voting. So I guess if I guess this was the night to do it. Well, I was going to ask everybody to cast a vote for Joni because she is there is nobody that did better than she did in terms of votes. You could do that to Adrian if you really want to give Adrian something to do. In the meanwhile, you are doing that. I'm going to call on our supporting roles. I would ask everybody, because we are running short on time, to please keep your reports to one minute or even less. Our ah counter this evening was Ram Carolina Ramirez. Carolina, how did we do in fill terms of filled pauses? Thank you, Jim. Can you see my screen? The, the sheet? Yeah. Yes, we Great. can. Yep. Okay, fast. Uh, Kim, just one. Um, David, your favorite grand, grand A. Um, Maggie, your favorite grand A. Um, and Andy, A as well. Lou, just one A. And here we can see the distribution of the club. Our favorite grant is A. Ah. <laughs> Back to you, Jim. Thank you, Carolina. Pamela Benjamin was our grammar cop this evening. Pamela, how did we do? Jim, we did very well. I didn't have to issue any citations. I liked what Maggie said when her she asked her children. She said one, stu one of her children liked having opportunity and the other liked being the boss of the family. We all like being the boss of the family, don't we? Andy Byrne had two great quotes, one from Steve Jobs and one about being a leader. And Lou had something really pithy and fun, racked up time. He went to a large, a long list of who would have racked up time and speeches and OP. I thought that was eloquent. And he said, turtle, the turtle is the most veteran VTM, very eloquent as well. Jim Barber said milestones and Joni said, you're, stone, you're showing me visual, visual, visual representations. I thought, I really liked that sentence when she was explaining Zoom to in her evaluations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pamela. Natasha Van Ellison was our watcher. Natasha, what did you see? Thank you. Madam General Evaluator, thank you. I saw beautiful smiles and I saw wonderful backgrounds and everyone was nicely centered. And the one time I had to turn off my camera, Andy takes a snapshot of me <laughs> not looking at you. However, you all look wonderful, everyone. Like I said, you did an excellent job with your centering. And I will say that Kim Learning, you had the best background that went along with your bubbly personality this evening. <laughs> yes, you did. Thank you. And back to you, General Evaluator, Mr. Barber. Thank you, Natasha. And finally, our chat monitor this evening was Deborah Carr. No relation to David Carr. Deborah. How would, what did we do in the chat tonight? It was busy. 
initially it was all, oh, look, who's here? And welcoming everyone back to, you know, with the wonderful faces that we haven't seen in so long. Then it, we, it really dove into a couple of different things. I highly suggest that you save it. And like Adrienne, Adrienne wrote in about the DTM path. She gave information on that. Uh, Graham put in the tip of the, of the evening. He gave some extended information on that. Kelvin gave a nice, a nice chat. He said, just to the be, begin with the end in mind by Stephen Covey. And that's just a great statement for all of us at any time. But it was really busy. There was great information in there. And I highly suggest that you save it. There's three dots to the right. If you're not familiar with it, just click on that. It'll say save chat and save it. There you go. Back to you. Thanks, Deb. A good report and a good suggestion. Thank you. Now, I will evaluate this meeting, and I will do it rather briefly. I want to give special recognition to our three presenters, Lou, Andy, and David. I know that took a lot of time and effort to go into that, but you did a great job, all three of you. Congratulations. That was wonderful. I also want to give special recognition to our Toastmaster of the Day, Kim Leeming. Did a nice job, Kim. I'd like to see you be permanent Toastmaster. You did a good <laughs> job. This overall, this was a creative, entertaining, and informative meeting. And since our club could be described as creative, entertaining, and informative, this was a fitting representation of our past five years. That's my evaluation of the meeting. And I now return control to our super Toastmaster of the day, Kim Leeming. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, Thanks to everyone for filling my night with wonderful stories and memories about this awesome online Toastmasters Club. And um, I'll end with one more quick joke. Did you know that there are public speaking potatoes? Nothing special, really. They're just commentators. I will now hand the meeting back to you, our president, Lou Brown. Thank you so much. And I couldn't agree more with you, Jim. I think Kim should be a permanent Toastmaster for this club. It is amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kim, for bringing such an entertaining experience to us. Over the past five years, we have naturally had five presidents. We have the pleasure of having two of them other than me with us here today who are both members. I, in the spirit of continuing with our celebration slash anniversary portion of the meeting, would like to ask each of them because this is all about them. I don't want to, I'm not going to ask me these questions. And quite frankly, I didn't even prepare myself to answer them. So <laughs> I'm going to ask them a couple of questions. I'd like to, for each of them to share their thoughts. We have two folks with different personalities. Actually, all five of our presidents had different personalities, different styles, different legacies. So I think this will be very interesting as we hear from both David Carr, our founding father slash first president, and Nick Lacani, who is is our current immediate past president just before me. Nick, I know it is somewhere like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. for you. Thank you for hanging in there and being with us throughout the entire meeting. You, my friend, feel free to go as long as you like up to 9.59 or 8.59, depending on where we're at. I'm in a different time zone. <laughs> I'm sure David won't mind. That'll be your prize for staying with us. Okay, Nick, what was your greatest achievement during, during your term? Well, Lou, um, I, I wanted to make an impact. It was important for me to in, make an impact because I was the first uh, non-white and non-US president of this club. Uh, some people think it's important, some people don't. I, I, I don't know. All I knew is I needed to make an impact. And I had a State of the Union speech, and in, in that, what I said was, I want the three Cs. I want clarity, connection, and collaboration for our club and our members. And then during my year, we got a lot of things done inside the club. We got people, have clear ideas, and have, I had a vision for VTM. I created VTM. It wasn't just for this club. It was for a number of online clubs. And we had the connection of our members inside our club and outside our club and collaborating 
with other people all over the world. And that carried on in the second VTM and in the EVVCon that uh, David uh, chaired uh, recently. So born out of those ideas, I think that the impact on the club was that uh, when I joined and uh, before I became president, it was very strong club, very inward looking though. And the biggest change I think I helped to make come around with a fantastic board that I had was that I helped the members not only work with each other, but then look outside and work with others outside in different clubs as well. That's the biggest impact I feel as though I've made. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You may have answered some of this next question during your during the prior question, but I'll, I'm going to ask it anyway. What did you learn from your time as president that you take forward with you? So many lessons. First of all, I had a wonderful, uh, um, you, I learned from uh, Roger Fung, who was the de facto president when I first joined, and um, from Lois. It was wonderful for me. And Lois especially taught me from day one, stay in your lane, Nick. Stay in your lane. Allow the others to do their jobs. Allow the other board members to do their job, but then support them and make sure they're comforted comfortable, confident. And that, what that did was, I, I've been president of, uh, I think I've, I've been president four or five times now. And this one year I had online presenters was the best, absolute best experience. Because like you today, you said earlier, I didn't want to give it up. I didn't want to, if you tell me that I could be president next year, I take it with both hands right now. Um, yeah, so I think that stay in your lane, trust the people around you, and they will have your back as well. Thank you. And I remember you passing that sage advice on to me as well, stay in your lane. And even though I had some bumper guards, I remember crashing through them a few times here and there, but <laughs> tried to always get back in. Last question. What advice would you give our next president, Andrew Byrne, to help him and our club succeed? Okay, so... As I said a minute ago, I watched Roger, I watched Lois, and what I did was I built upon what they did before the start of the meeting, and I love what they did because they got me excited, warmed me up before the meeting. Uh, anticipation, when are they going to call on me? I want to introduce myself. I've got my 30 seconds, 15 seconds, whatever it is, and then I was able to make an impact. There was uh, electricity in the air. That's what I would like to see more of. And that's what I try. Um, I, I actually went one further and I actually brought in music and all that kind of stuff. You know me. And that sort of vibe sets up the meeting. It makes things exciting. People want to come more for that. The meeting is great anyway, but people will come for the beginning for that. And then afterwards, cut it. And boom, allow people to talk about, allow people to chat as if the meeting's over. Let's have a chat in the bar or the or over a coffee or however you want to make it, because that is how you get in touch with people. Let's get more of that uh, flowing again. Uh, there's not an awful lot wrong with the club at all. It's just a few little tweaks heading in the right direction. And I'm so thankful that you also a Gen Xer. I believe you are because you played some awesome 80s and 90s music when you were DJ. So I appreciated that. Thank you. Okay, David Carr, our founding father president, although I, Nick did mention about Roger Fung being very actively involved. I didn't know to what extent, and now I have a much better idea that an appreciation for it. Same three questions, David. I don't know if you wrote them down. I'll repeat them. What was your greatest achievement during your term as president? getting the thing off the ground but i shouldn't claim too much credit for that i mean I, I was very fortunate to have people like graham who actually had experience doing online toastmasters which i didn't have prior to this i, I, I had never been to the meeting of an, another club that did online toastmasters i just decided i was going to figure out how to do it uh, and uh, it was also uh, phyllis Harmon and carol mccullough 
is, is too bad neither of those are, are there here with us this evening, but they were also people who had experience in online Toastmasters and brought that in. Jim and Chris Gold were actually new to doing online Toastmasters, but they'd done so much other online video stuff that they, they brought a lot to the club and, and many other people as well. I, I have no idea how, how Deborah Carr found me, um, but you know, I, I, I went out on uh, the Toastmasters International Members Group said we're starting a club and a bunch of people uh, came in and joined and we were, we were very fortunate along the way to have a lot of good people con to contribute to making the club better, um, including those who, who weren't in the, you know, the initial crop, but who came along and saw other possibilities like Nick. Maybe Deborah went and did an ancestry.com test and figured out that she really is a long lost cousin of yours. Who knows? And you know what? That really is a testament to the amazement that is our club because so many people got involved from day one to make sure that we succeeded. And it's amazing how far we've and you're come. You're one and... of them. I should mention that too. <laughs> <laughs> I did draw on uh, my South Florida connection. So we, I think we've, the, the South Florida concentration has been watered down over the years. We're, we're more global today. Um, but Early Which on, Lou, Lou was former South Florida, had moved off to Chicago, but still still had connections. So, so and sorry, you know, and that's so, a great so, part too, <laughs> is being able to reconnect with friends. Sorry, not the South Florida connection. It's the South Florida mafia, isn't it? Well, <laughs> it's, it's just cocaine cowboys. Um, that, that, <laughs> that's what we do in our spare time. And David, what did you learn at, from your term as president? That is a um, lasting skill for you, or yeah, I don't know. Uh, Zoom skills? <laughs> in 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 well, infinity, uh, uh, infinite number of of things. You know, it was actually the first time. Well, I, I guess I had been pro I had been president of a local Toastmasters club too, but I was fairly new to actually being in charge of anything. I, I would be involved in various nonprofit groups, and they would usually make me the secretary. Dave can take notes on things and, and type them up. Um, so, so, you know, learning how to, how to be in charge of something and, and to distribute responsibility appropriately. Um, of course, you know, you, you guys know that you actually just are secretly part of the, the WordPress for Toastmasters beta program. Um, so, you know, thanks for putting up with that. And I'm sure you've probably really expanded your WordPress skills as a result of this project alone. So wonderful. What advice do you give our incoming president, Toastmaster Andrew Byrne, to make sure he and our club are successful? Well, I, I, I think Nick said it to you, uh, Andy, try and jazz it up a little bit. Project excitement. And uh, what was the thing that... that uh, I think it was a Winston Churchill quote about be brief and be done, you know, it, it maybe make it a little bit more compact uh, some of the time. Uh, think table topics rather than uh, than 10 minute speech. I don't know. Just... Okay. Thank you, sir. We have about five minutes left. I am going to, in the spirit of time, Madam Toastmaster, kind of just take things over as president, if you are okay with that. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. And just say thank you to everyone for being here for this occasion. All of you for being a part of our wonderful club. Some of you from day one, some of you from last week, I think our newest member may have joined just a week so ago. So this is really amazing that we continue to grow. David, thank you so much for that video. That was such a walk back through time. I, I really enjoyed it. And it's amazing how many people that I remember throughout that time, I was like, wow, you know, there's probably 20 plus people in that video that I kind of almost forgot about because they have, I haven't seen them in a long time. So thank you for that. Thank you to all of you officers that are here for being an incredible part of the team, the executive board. I know there's been some trials and tribulations and different challenges over the year. One of the things that I really loved about this past year is that we were able to introduce at least one new element which is almost like a great thing for every president to do is, is do something, uh, add your own flavor to your to the meeting, your legacy, what it is. And the tech tip, or I guess tip of the day, not just necessarily tech, was the new thing we added. And we're also doing something that's kind of 
go over to the next term, which is a presentation of some new piece of software. As often as we can do it this year, we're doing Prezi. And Nick, by the way, we'll be doing that Prezi. I'm, I think, I don't know if it's called a presentation or just a Prezi presentation, but anyway, Nick will be conducting a Prezi presentation for us in the near future. I think I'll call it our first workshop. So we hope that all of you can join us for that. And of course, fine. last but certainly not least, thank you to all of you, the members. It was so great to see some of the smiling faces that we haven't seen in a while. So nice of you to show up for this event. If anyone would like to add some final comments as we round up the path to the next three minutes, the last three minutes, feel free to raise your hand and share some thoughts. Andy, as David said, make it quick. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a clarification. Next week is July 4th. That doesn't affect our friends outside the country, but for those inside the country, is that going to limit your participation or what are your thoughts? Deborah. My neighborhood is like being in the middle of Beirut years ago. So <laughs> I know definitely not to be online. Yeah. <laughs> so I won't be around. <laughs> Are you in Chicago too? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I won't be out at night in Chicago, that's for sure. So I'll be at the meeting. Right. So it looks like it's a go for next week, right? It is. Yeah. yeah. Any other thoughts? Roxanne, Jim, Chris, Dr. Michael, Calvin, anyone who actually hasn't uh, had a moment to speak during this meeting? Okay. With Michael, that, Dr. Alexander, I think you're about to say something. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. We haven't heard from you for ages. Yeah, it is unfortunate that the high level of activity of my schedule has made showing up consistently any place on a Monday afternoon difficult. But I will tell you, I have been approached by other online clubs several times since I last appeared here. And my response is always the same. I am delighted that you are an online club. And I'm delighted that you want to advance the skills and activities of people presenting online. But if I want to deal with an online club, I want to go to the premier online club, the one which really fundamentally defines what you can do. And that is online presenters. That is a great way to simply end our meeting and say, host, please turn off the recording. But all of you stick around. I would like to just say one thing to our in